Hello, familia. This is uh, Luis Cotto um, here, and today we are going to learn how to make um, some geometric origami. Specifically, we're going to make a cube, which I don't have available right now. We'll make one, and it'll show you also how to make a, a stellated octahedron. Um, and uh, this is different than regular origami in that a lot of times origami is done to create a cre creature with one piece of paper like a crane or an elephant or a frog what we're doing is we're going to do something called modular origami which um, is where you do the same fold to each paper and then you do it a number of times and then you will um, put all the pieces of paper together to get something like this in this case this is 12 pieces of paper. A cube is only six. So we're gonna do a cube right now. Um, we're gonna do what's called a shinobi fold, which will end up looking like this. And this is what we will put together. Um, and we'll start. First of all, you know, origami paper can be purchased anywhere. And most craft stores, they have in different sizes. They have this one. This is a little bigger in plain colors. But if you don't have any around the house, you can just take a magazine. This is a, a page out of a magazine that we don't need, that we were going to recycle. And the way you make a square is you bring one face parallel to another. You see how I did that? This, even with this. You fold this part across over the the extra. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just have to have the crease. Do it again. And then you just rip it. This might not be the best rip. Or it will. And before you know it, you have a square. You do this a bunch of times. You get six of them. You can do it. Twelve, you do something else. What also works during the holidays is wrapping paper. Wrapping paper is really good um, for folding origami. So we'll get started now. And before we go any further, just want to say to be in line with the Hartford Public Library and celebrating books, we are featuring Sammy Miranda's collection of poetry called We Is from Saro Soba Publishing. Um, it's a really wonderful poet, really wonderful collection. Look at your local library to see if it, they have it. So I'm going to take a piece of origami paper. In this case, when you buy it, a lot of them have color on one side, white on the other to differentiate the quote-unquote front and back. So I'm going to put it on its front, and we're going to start just by making a half fold. Bring one side up to the next, flatten it out, and I have to emphasize, I love having crispy corners, so pick it up, pinch it, that's step one. Step two is what I call a closet fold or a coffin fold. We're going to bring this to the middle, so where that line is, we're going to fold it up. I like to hold this part up, that way I know where my paper stops. Once that's down, I pinch it down. Use my nails to get a crispy corner. I turn it around and I do it to the, to the next side. The key thing to all of this is whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other, okay? So we already did it here. I'm gonna flip it around. And do it here. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And there you have it. It's like a closet, right? So this is what it looks like now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this left corner, left side, and I'm going to bring it up to go even with this. Bring it up and go even. And then again, what you do one side, you want to do to the other. 
I'm gonna flip it upside down like that or flip it over and do the same to this side. You're doing it on the same side. So I said flip it over. Do not flip it over, just shivel it around. And you end up with this, with two big triangles. Again, let's do that over. You bring one side up, the left side up, turn it around, do the left side up again, and you have to do this each and every time. Sometimes when people go fast, they might bring the right side down. What that does is it shifts the tab in a different space and you will not be able to match up the tabs when you're putting everything together. So we're here now, right? We take this little triangle here. What we did was we created two triangles, this big one right here and this little one. We take the little one that's poking out and we dip it right behind right behind the pocket. You see that? Now we have this big triangle. Take this big triangle and hide it behind the pocket also. So now that big triangle and the little triangle are hiding behind this tab right here. I'm going to similarly turn it around again. Look at these two triangles. Take the little one, put it behind. Take the big one, put it behind. You have that. So now is when I do flip it over. And this is where we're going to do a little fold, two folds, and I like to call this the United States fold because it's easy for some people to remember. If we look at this as a right, like a funky United States, I'm going to call this point Maine, I'm going to call this point Florida, I'm going to call this point Texas, and I'm going to call this point Washington. So I'm going to take the state of Washington and I'm going to bring it all the way to Maine. Then I'm going to take the state of Florida, bring it over to Texas. And this is the Shinobi fold. See? Looks just like that. So now we're going to do another one just to recap. I'm going to fold in half. Crispy corners. I'm going to do the closet fold. Bring this up just so I can see it better. Crispy corners. I'm going to turn it around. Do the same to the other side. Closet fold. You can pause this video at any time. You want to see how it's done. Apologies if it's hard to see. I'm going to take the left side up. I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to do the left side up. Look at these two triangles. You turn it up like that, we'll still see the triangles. There's a little one and a big one. I take the little one, tip it back, and the big one, send it right back with it. I'm going to turn it around, take the little triangle, put it back. Big triangle goes back with it. Now I flip it over. And now I have the United States. So I take Washington and I bring to Maine. Then I take Florida and I bring to Texas. So Washington to Maine, Florida to Texas. I did a couple beforehand and I have six. The key thing to putting everything together, you have these tabs, and then you have pockets, believe it or not. This is where little things that you created, where the tabs go in. There are four of them. See? Like that. Like that. You see how this slides in? 
So the key to creating this cube is that you want to put a tab in a pocket that doesn't already have a tab. I'll explain. I don't. There's a pocket there, but I don't want to put this tab there because there's already a tab here. So when you look at this, there's a tab here, there's a tab here, there's no tab here, and no tab here. So these are the two that will get the tab. So I go on this side, I look for the pocket, and I just slide it in. Then I say, oh, the other one's over here. I do the same thing. I go like this. slide it in. You can kind of see the makings of the cube now, right? You keep it there, and the more you put in, the, diff the first time you're doing it, the more difficult it gets. The great thing about this is that it's going to work. Stay in the struggle. No matter how you do it, you might want to walk away for a second, but definitely come back to it. This is a tab that's alone, so we know here, because of what we just talked about, there are two possible pockets that we can send this to. Here and here. So I'm going to take that tab. I'm going to find an empty pocket. I'm going to go like this. And now I know that I have two that also need to go in. This is where it gets tricky. So I start playing with it. To put that one there. And to put that one there. Dun, dun, dun. Then every time you do it, you readjust, and we have that. Take another one, the same rule. Wherever there's a pocket, an empty pocket, you can put a tab. There's no tab here, so I know that this pocket is up for play. I put it there. I hold this down. I grab this one, put it there. Then I grab this one, fold it a little, bend it a little, play with it, and put it there. One last one. You see how this looks? The two tabs are up. They're just begging for pockets. These don't have any tabs, so the pockets will go in there. So this will go like this. So I move these out of the way. This is what it's going to look like. Now it's just a matter of putting in the pockets. Again, like this gets all funky, but you just want to Again, play with it. Stay in the struggle. It will be a struggle initially. Once you get that last one in, you mess with it a little. Then you leave it alone. This is a cube. A cube is one of five platonic solids. The Platonic Solids is a concept created by Plato, hence it's called Platonic. Plato was a philosopher from Athens, Greece, who lived to be about 80 years old. He was born around 428 BC and died around 348, and is known for creating basically one of the first learning institutes in the world history called the Academy. He was the one that invented or thought of this concept of platonic solids, solids which are um, geometric figures and polygons that have certain um, vertices and faces. And there were five of them. There was, there's a tetrahedron, there's a cube, there's an octahedron, there's a dodecahedron, and an icosahedron. There are five. With the shinobi fold, we can get two of them. The great thing about these two is that they prove the concept of 
dualism, where each platonic solid has its own dual. In the tetrahedron's case, it is its own dual. Basically, the tetrahedron has four vertices and four faces, so it is its own dual. The cube has eight vertices, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and six faces, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Whereas the octahedron has six vertices and eight faces. The dodecahedron, so these two are its own dual. Also, the dodecahedron has 20 vertices, four faces, and the icosahedron has 20 faces and 12 vertices. Our next lesson will be proving this theory by creating a skeletal octahedron that a cube can go in to show how that dualism works. With that, I'd like to thank the Hartford Public Library for doing these and wish you all a good day.